My name is Bill Richards, and I spent 23 years in prison for a crime I didn't commit. When I came up the road, the lights were out, which was odd because my wife was going to be waiting for me. It was summer, it was hot. I went in and got a drink of iced tea, and I walked out, and that's when I found her. Pam dying was like losing a part of my soul. It was a part of me. It was just suddenly the sudden shock of she's gone. One of the detectives took me down to the police station. They questioned me at least 12 hours. And then they finally said, well, if you won't admit to it, you're under arrest. Bill was prosecuted four times. At the fourth trial, the prosecution for the first time brought in a so-called bite mark expert who testified that Bill had a unique dentition, one that was only found in maybe one out of 100 people that matched the bite mark on Pam's body. The problem with experts in the courtroom is that the audience is often unfamiliar with the details of the science that's at question. An expert comes into a court uh, carrying the mantle of science, and if somebody comes in and says, well, this particular dental pattern matches this piece of evidence from the crime scene, uh, and I think that it's a 99% probability that this is the person who caused that bite, a typical jury is inclined to believe that. As a result of that bite mark testimony, he was convicted, sentenced to 25 to life in prison, and he wound up serving 23 years in prison. They put me on the killer yard in the killer building. The 180 yard is the worst of the worst. Um, the crazy killers, violence is the way of life. Got a few scars, I gave a few scars, and you survive. You never forget your wife. Uh, you never forget what happened to her. And so you're torn between the grief of losing your wife and the anger of they aided and abetted the real killer in getting away. I had to remember that night in detail, every night I was in prison. So I've never to this day gotten over that loss. I probably never will. Bill contacted the California Innocence Project in 2001. We started to look for DNA evidence that might exonerate Bill and point to the person who actually killed Pam. Two items were tested. The paving stone, which the prosecution said was the murder weapon, DNA not belonging to Pam or Bill was found on the murder weapon. They also tested some hair found under Pam's fingernail. Bill's hair was not found under Pam's fingernail, someone else's was. The DNA testing result convinced us that Bill was not the murderer. After we got the DNA results, we met with the dentist, the expert who had testified against Bill. After re-looking at the evidence, he realized he'd made a mistake, he believed his testimony was wrong, and he concluded that Bill could not have been the person who had made the bite mark found on Pam's body. Many forensic techniques, particularly the so-called feature comparison techniques, were not developed by scientists. They were developed by law enforcement and applied for the purpose of identifying the perpetrator. This is true for fingerprints, it's true for bullet marks and tire tracks and bite marks. These techniques have not been validated, they've not been shown to be reliable, and the wrong people go to jail as a result of that. I walked into the Supreme Court pretty confident that we were going to get Bill's conviction overturned. I thought this would be a slam dunk. They would come back and I would go home. The California Supreme Court ruled against us. They held that an expert opinion was just an opinion and it couldn't be false. When they came back and was ruling four to three that you can't recant your testimony, even though it's scientifically proven to be false, uh, it was just crushing, it was just overwhelming. That was the first time in all those years I gave up. Better to have no hope than to have the hope ripped away like that. It was devastating. I went back to prison to die there. California Innocence Project doesn't give up when we believe our client is innocent. We will do whatever we can for as long as we can. And in Bill's case, we went to the legislature to get the statute rewritten. They passed a law called the Bill Richards Bill that allowed experts to recant their testimony in light of new science. 
And because of that law, the Supreme Court reviewed my case a second time and unanimously overturned my conviction. I was there the day that Bill got out. Um, it was probably one of the proudest and happiest days in my legal career. I mean, there is nothing that compares with walking an innocent person out of prison and tasting freedom with him for the first time. I had never felt normal in all those years being locked up. I had felt like an animal in a cage. And when I walked out the door, I felt normal again. I felt like this is where I belong. This is where I should be. It was just like a release of emotions to say I'm normal again. Well, I appreciate the freedom every day. If I'm driving down the street, I realize I was in a box just a few years ago. I can open a door by myself and I have my own key. It's hard to describe how important that is when for all those years somebody else opened doors for you and didn't let you out if they didn't feel like it. Bill's story is an important one because it reveals the failures of modern forensic science. These fancy techniques that we see on the CSI shows give us a sense that we have a leg up on the bad guys. And that's an illusion. People need to understand that TV is not reality and that forensic science is not always science. It can be a tool, but it can also be a weapon.